right. <laughs> yeah. so then we'll get started here. Uh, yeah. Hey, Tom, do you mind if uh, I just play a little clip from your, your launch video uh, to be released on Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, it's not That's quite finished yet, out. but we're, we're all under, you know, we're all among close friends, so. Okay. It's only a, a yeah. minute clip, but that was really well done, so I'm going to go ahead and share that. That's, that's, a, that's a major movie mm -hmm. you've made there. Nice. You'll be scared not to rent it. <laughs> yeah. No. Can't wait to see it. Um, <laughs> the, the Netflix sequel yeah. is coming in uh, 2022. That's cool. Well, well, well done. Well, <laughs> thank you. Well, you can see, you know, the, the, the meager profits that we've made over, over all the years we've been in business have all been poured into that, and there's nothing left. So yeah. um, here we are. <laughs> no, money, no money to produce lights, but you've made a, yeah. you've made a great film. <laughs> so has everybody here seen the prototype in person? Because you guys, yep. I had a sneak preview on the prototype that everybody did, Mike and all you guys. Did you guys get a chance to see I that? Did, I saw it in a restaurant. It's good. I mean, very <laughs> early form. Yeah. Have, you, have, you have you turned it on, Bella? Have you, have you seen it on? We did, we did turn it on, but it wasn't that, it wasn't, I don't think it was what the finished version is, but it was, uh, yeah, I remember it scared the shit out of all the diners or whoever was that, <laughs> what else, right. the staff of the restaurant. I think, I think when these guys brought it by for us, we were on location on a restaurant as well. We, we cranked that thing up and, uh, you know, like always when we're shooting and they come by to show us a demo on a light, it's hard to break away from what we're doing and get a minute to take a look. But, uh, we did come by and, and I remember just thinking this light's a game changer it's uh it's awesome for me for multiple years like it's always been aiming for um output 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 and it's got that output i mean jamie we did the photometrics on it didn't we um just before we finished the just before you all went home at the end of first round and i, I think we're in the world of like it's 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 punchy as hell yeah give me a second i'll get them up yeah it's punchy mm -hmm. as hell i mean you know I, I, at the, at, uh, I compare it to the devices that I've used a lot, right? So I compare them a lot to the digital Sputniks. So we know that for, for many years, the DSs have had RGB and they've had punch and they've had, you know, the ability to, to be pretty spotty. Um, but this is like, this is close, if not kind of, it's got a slightly wider beam, I believe, but I think it's in the zone. Yeah, it's, it's a wider beam than the DS6, yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Right. No, I think it's I mean, really great. And the thing, the thing is that you know, uh, I've, I've talked to a few people about um, 
the progression of lights and like it, to, to me it's really hard to actually make me excited about a new light because everything just does this and that and that and that and that and that and so it feels to me like you know a few years ago well if everyone was doing bicolor what and then somebody did rgb why is anyone doing bicolor anymore it feels like rgb is the thing um now i'm like well why isn't every light waterproof i mean really like it's led like why is not every led wireless we, and wireless we've had we've like you know for the right. cream sauce skies jamie and i the last three jobs or four i think we've used the cream sauce sky because we've had some wet work either a wet stage um yeah mostly or an outside thing mostly a wet stage you know either mist or rain or you know, like the, the whole idea of being waterproof is i mean from my perspective is incredible just having that punch having that ability then to diffuse from that means that I can then add that diffuser. I'm not, I'm not putting in the sky like a, a soft light, like I'm putting a punchy light that I can also, the fact that I can pixel map a little bit as well, that's, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really handy thing. The, the ability, because then you can just, it, it just as lights are at, being asked to do more and more, and you know, you need, you need light to do more for visual effects or for whatever, just creating more uh, different qualities out of it. Pixel mapping is, is, really a, a space where there's a ton of opportunity and so it's it's really great that you've got that granularity in that thing because there's there's eight zone is it eight zones that, that's eight yeah. zones yeah, yeah that's right that's great mm -hmm. something punchy that can pixel map is really a game changer like something that actually has some serious throw mm -hmm. it's versatility that is what we're looking for and this thing takes all of the elements of things that have come before it and put it all into one package that obviously Tama, you guys have done a great job designing and uh, we're looking forward to getting those on set. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Mike. Yeah. yeah great. Much appreciated. Sure. We're just gonna oh, get, get out there. Up the question of yeah. how's the availability looking as you just launched <laughs> this week. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like you're ready to issue a PO, Mike. Um, not quite, because I, I need a job first. But oh, uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, how how does your uh, manufacturing look? And uh, what would you know? Are we going to be? Should we be thinking in terms of just getting a few to start, or you know, if we have stages where we can put you know fifty, a hundred? Is that something that you guys are going to be able to help us out with? What do you think? We're ramping to that kind of availability uh, quite soon. Uh, our first couple of runs, honestly, uh, we're, we're keeping them fairly contained just to make sure we've ironed out everything as well as we can, sure. de-risk the project as much as possible so that we're not, you know, running around the world trying to try to refit things if there's any issues. Um, but um, yeah, so we're in our sort of sampling phase at the moment. And so our engineering sampling phase and a very limited run um, in August, uh, which is which is all basically accounted for. There's a few demo units that will be going out the world out of that, uh, around the world out of that. Uh, and then in uh, through September and into sort of, you know, mid-October, um, we'll be cranking out our first um, fairly limited run. Once again, it's, you know, we're not at that point, we're not really uh, mass producing on huge scale but uh, by the by the third run essentially uh, we'll be really cranking the handle so that that will be uh, sort of towards the you know November December um, January period when when the next higher volume runs really start hitting are you going to continue Which, making <clears throat> the Apio, Tama? Um at this moment it's, it's kind of a funny question because it, it, it's really interesting to me. We we felt like uh, after 11 years of it being in the market that it would probably be seeing the end of its days uh, fairly soon with this coming online. Um, but it's it's bizarre because we've, we've day in day out the last I don't know six months we've been getting orders for Doppios and it's it's really amazing to me. It's actually yeah, picked up still, a whole lot. We're still renting them um, and actually in in white it's still about 15 percent brighter than vortex of course especially the double daylight yeah it's a, it's a whole bunch narrower so um is that, that that's, um that's, that's the time i was curious is the is the vortex the same emitter package as what's in the cream source micro same color and all yes. that okay yeah 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 essentially the same 
Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So they're really they're really interchangeable. You can really mix them together really well. Um, and I guess that just make, makes it sort of simpler. Yeah. A good question. That, that right? sense. Is your the limited run that you're talking about in the first two phases? Um, is, limited means will we still be able to get our sixty to eighty units, or, or is it twenty or five? Uh, you, have to, you, have the, to fight, you have to fight us for it, Michael. I knew it. I knew it. Look, <laughs> look Tama, send the stuff west. Go to the West Coast first, not to the UK first. Because these guys, will, <laughs> I already know what's happening here. <laughs> we 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 are going to we are going to pummel those lights and into submission, and you will hear very yeah. quickly. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, we are going to be very respectful, of course, but I like oh. to uh, I like to put my lights through their phases. But I must say, what I've seen, like I'm going to say, if I'm going to pummel a light, this is the light to pummel. I mean, the, the build quality is like incredible, beyond incredible, actually. Yeah. Should we pummel it yeah, with this? Yeah, let's pummel. No, no, don't do it. Okay, fine, do it. Do it. <laughs> Signature series. Yeah. Oh, nice shot, Tom. Wait a minute, that was That's a nerf ball. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was the nerf ball. ball. Now, now it's the, this. Hit the control panel. This one right here. Yeah. yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Right, to make sure it doesn't bounce right. back on yeah. yourself. Don't yeah, make it exactly. bounce back. <laughs> All right. That was pretty much a direct shot on the on the control that's panel. Than, that's better than the tip. First practice, you broke the window behind right, it. That, with the windshield. Can you, can you do a demonstration when the DOP cracks it and starts kicking oh. lights around because it's not working <laughs> for him? Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. So, is it a headbutt first, or well, no, no? You, you headbutt the headbutt the gaffer's head into it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. So, yeah. I drag him behind the back of the truck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool, man. No, it's very cool. So yeah, it's it's pretty pretty resilient stuff. Um, it's this this techno polymer we've been developing. This is this is one of the castings here. Um, and so we've put this through pretty heavy, um, heavy testing, a lot of, lot of drop tests. What, what do you think? I mean, realistically, if you dropped it from six feet, you're walking along, dropped it, like, I mean, you're, you're saying, it, okay, so the back would be good. Yeah, the back's covered. Drop, I like that. It's the Elon Musk uh, demonstration. Yeah. It's good. It hasn't failed yet. Yeah. It'd be nice having a heat sink that doesn't bend. <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's something that can take it. I I have a whole truck full of bent right. LED lights. <laughs> what um, yeah. What, was good, what's the repair like? Like, what's the component like if you have to do repair on it? Um. Yeah. So so these these covers here, the the cover that I just showed you, um, that comes off with the set of screws peripherally around each side, and so then so you can lift the covers up and get them to gotcha. service the, the drivers and the power supplies and the main electronics. Um, so yeah, it's all pretty, pretty achievable that way. Okay. Is it still water, is it still waterproof then? Like once you've done that, have you broken a seal by doing that? Oh no, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's like, you know, uh, aerospace grade kind of sealing technology. So, mm -hmm. uh, we've got custom made seals that fit really tightly into a groove. So, it's re it, relatively easy to reassemble it um, after you've pulled it apart. I yeah, that's pretty good because on the um, the Titan tubes, you have to be sort of an authorized repair center to make sure that it's still an IP65 unit once you repaired it. And there's a little trick to it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And have you tested these, Tama, uh, actually submerged in a pool at any depths or anything like that? Um, well, IP65 isn't really a depth. Exactly. Rating it's um, it's more for for water jets in all kinds of directions, um, but uh, yeah, I mean it really can take a pretty severe dousing. Uh, yeah, we have actually with the tested it. We've tested guys all them. with the micro. Yeah, I mean, those, right? uh, yes, and uh, you know we've done submersion tests for every part of this. Um, the you know there's of course there's disclaimers like. We're running in 240 volts here, uh, and you know this connector is not rated for submersion, so we wouldn't really recommend that. Um, but, but I mean, yeah, it is rated for, you know, full IP, you know, 65. Um, you some champagne on it. 
<laughs> yeah, so, so um, yeah, Martin Smith, I was chatting with him a couple of days ago, and he's like, what, what happens if you're rigging them in a moon box and you haven't got any rain protection and they're facing straight down and those fans are facing up all night? Well, this is, this is what happens. <clears throat> really That's nothing cool. that interesting to report no no, no. I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's why, like, every time now I see a light that's not waterproof like that, I go, well, why isn't it waterproof? Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it's a little, it's a little, I know it's a little, um, I don't know, a little rude, but the thing is you go, well, <laughs> if, if, if you can, you know, because all this technology, I mean, but if we can make these things that waterproof, it, it's, it's incredible. Well, normally, also, Greg, the same would appear to you being built into the lamp. I, again, I, I anyone else would be remiss to not build the PSU into the lamp now. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like that's the way we have to go forward. Doesn't it? Like anything, anything that doesn't do that, any lamp that doesn't do that feels like it's extra. Mm. Yeah. So, I, so I, Jamie, I, so I Jamie, you have the, that, Jamie, I think. do you have oh, the um, photometrics mate, based on what yep. we, we only tested it against the DS6, exactly the same output as a DS6. Mm. Right. Um, Ooh. And at this diffused, it was a like half a stop brighter than a DS6 through like a heavy diffusion. Right. At 70 feet. So did we test Go on. Have we tested against the sky panel? I don't think we did. On that day, we'll I think that... we only tested we'll do it when the we DS6. Get... Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it when we get back. We'll try and come up with a very similar softness level between the two of them. And yeah. mm -hmm. just, just check the output. I mean, what's the wattage of a, of a, of a DS6? 800 watts, isn't it? Mike, do you know? Um, yeah, I think each module is 100, 100 watts, and then I think the, there might be some other in there. So, yeah, I figure it's probably, this is what, 620? Is that what it is? 620 watts 650. or 650 watts? Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's in the zone. So, yeah. Mm. You know, but I mean, the fact that you've got, you said it's, uh, you said, Jamie, did you say diffused? It was a half stop brighter than a DS6? At 70 feet, yeah. 70, yeah, wow. Yeah. But um, uh, clean. It was. It was. It matched the DS all the way up to about seventy-five feet. Um, exactly the same photometrics as a DS six. That's fantastic. Mm, that is good. I, I just love this. I love the fact that you can do that to it, and suddenly yeah, it becomes exactly. a soft light. It's yeah. to me. It's exactly what I have always wanted. In you know, you, you put it up there and you just slide that on or slide it off if you want it softer or harder. Like, it's one thing I don't like about soft lights, soft LEDs, is that I can't sharpen them, I can't harden them up, you know? Mm. So, and I, I can't bounce them as well, I can't look like them. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. It's pretty, pretty, pretty wild. Now, Tema, if I wanted to join these together, we talked about this briefly, but I've forgotten, like, if I want to make a line of them, or if I want to join them and make them sort of a, a one single source, like I have in the past with Mike on, yes. um, you know, Mandalorian, we built this thing we called the Beast, which was, 48 heads, Mike, is that right? Yes, yeah. The, 48 heads, yeah, sing, DS single DS heads. Wow. Yeah, and it was mm -hmm. a big single source. And, you know, it was pretty, right. I think we did it, on, did it on Vice first, actually. And yeah. it, it becomes a soft sun, effectively becomes a soft sun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was beautiful. You guys, you guys showed me it when I came out on set that day. It was, it was, it was a right. beautiful rig. Yeah, it was. Really it was. impressive. A lot of cables. Yeah, um, and the course, cables. The, 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 <laughs> mentioned the huge four-wheel barrow that um, all the PSUs had to go on. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, at least you didn't have to drive it. You didn't put it in the back of a truck. At least you yeah. could man, man, manually do it. But, but, but if, if but to do yeah, something like, amazing source, really, really great. So, yeah. so Tamara, to do something like that here, because again, mm -hmm. if you've got if you've got thirty of these things, obviously you can put thirty in the ceiling, at ten foot apart, or you can put them all together, or a line, or something. Like, what are our right. what are our options, and how close can those pixels get together? Well, great, great question. Um, we have an eight point rigging system, which is, you know, uh, three eight threaded holes on all of, all of the corners. Uh, and so um, with that, uh, we also have, and we're developing a, a rigging system, which um, will allow you to, to do exactly what you're saying. And basically what that rigging system does, it's toolless, 
there's a pair of screws that you can put straight into these holes and then you come straight off the back with uh, uh, a, a spigot, you know, a baby pin. So, and then that baby pin goes into a quad receiver. We developed yep. our own quad receiver. And so you can stack up to four units um, together into this, into this, you know. And so that means you can basically tile in any, any direction you want. Right. Um, in, okay. So, yeah. How, how far, just, just my interest, how far are the pixels apart from each other when, that, when you eventually do that? Because um, part of the success of the DS rig was that the pixels got quite close together. I'm sure on mass it would be okay if they were about an inch or two apart. Yeah, but then yeah, it, it, it's mm. going to be almost almost three inches between them because you've got to allow a little gap for the mm -hmm. for the rigging, and plus you've got you know the front of the unit here, which is like uh, inch and a half to the edge. Is of there the a, emitters? Is there a heat issue if you start stacking them? Um, uh, so far, we we haven't really found a heat issue with that. Um, the fans will crank up uh, higher if there's, you know, really high ambient temperature, obviously. Uh, and this is the exhaust. So the, the hot air is flowing into the hot air and then, you know, finding its way out through the gaps. It comes out through the, um, through the back. It doesn't blow into the other light, right? Uh, no, it does. You, it, blows, it blows straight, straight into the other light. So, yeah, that hot air will go out and filter out through through the gap between the lights. Yeah. Tamar, with regard um, to the fans, have you, have, you, have you noise tested them and um, how long can you run the lamp without the fan on? Oh, thank you, Mike. Oh, there you um, go. Nice. Yeah. How long can you run the lamp without the fan on? Um, and, and do well, you have the option a, a question. To, yeah. Yeah. Question can you turn the fan off or off? Jamie. Okay. Yes, you can. You can uh, mute the fans. Um, but yeah, how long can you run them? I, I guess at 25 degrees C, it's probably around five minutes before they'll kick in at low. Is that oh, okay. a DMX control on the fan? Yes, of course. You, does this accept streaming ACN in? Uh, it will. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. the, that's the second part of second part of the build that we're busy working on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the fir first part is Artnet because that's a little easier. Second part is streaming ACN, and we're really aware of just how much people want it. So that's yeah. really high up the priority chain. Yeah. Sorry. I have a question oh. about that uh, array there. So mm. you, you you show it as many as four, and then mm -hmm. and you keep building on that or is that kind of absolutely the... yeah 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 just so, keep going right modular make it as big as you want yeah so the idea that the orange component at the back that's the the bottom half of a pipe clamp and so you know you can run speed rail right across in, in either direction just depends which orientation put the clamps depending on which way you want to rig uh and then yeah you can just keep dropping in fixtures and and the you know the four-way clamps in between them. Is there the be a is, how, how's the weight on that? So like if we're putting them in uh, aerial lifts, you know, how how many can we put into a uh, configuration till we're going to start running into weight issues on our aerial lifts? What are they? Thirty pounds. Thirty pounds a piece, right? Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Eight, right? Thirty pounds a piece. Yeah. Another, another game changer. Yeah, ten up there, no problem, man. Twelve. Yeah, sixteen <laughs> maybe. Sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. You yeah. could. Sure. You could. Yeah. What is it? What is the sky panel weigh? Uh, it's it's forty, 40 pounds it's with a little heavier. Uh, ballast, uh, yeah, a little yeah. heavier. Connected to it. Yeah. Forty pounds with the ballast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tamara, yeah. is there is there going to be a yoke configuration for this, like a double yoke or anything like that? You could like double stack them. Uh, yeah, that we, we are planning to do that, Andrew. Probably um, uh, a little further down the line because I I sort of see this the uh the rigging system is a bit more configurable and a little bit sort of easier to control out of the gate and then we can see what kind of configurations people really want um yeah i would like to see a double yoke quite quickly but i sort of put that as the next priority because it 
it doesn't serve everybody's purpose all of the time kind sure. of thing. But like three, you could do almost do three vertically, you know, three turned on their side, almost like an old nine light configuration, you know, that sort of yeah. thing. Mm. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, that'd and your yoke, they're really easy to uh, assemble and disassemble. Probably the easiest in the business, I believe. Nice. Pretty yeah, great, so if you if you're not familiar with the with the quick quick release yolk system, I mean, oh, it's really fantastic. I love it. That's it there. I'm going to try and do this without dropping it on my toe. But yeah, there you go. Proto goes down. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how easily you can oh, remove the. Tama, show quick, them the uh, the locking yeah. mechanisms on the accessory clips. I think that's really well designed, intelligent. Doesn't matter if they're locked or open, you can still slide accessories in. Interesting. Sure thing. I just, uh, uh, I'm disproving just how easy this is. Disproving. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> here we go. So, uh, let me zoom in a bit here on this. So this is our, our quick release latch mechanism for lenses and gels, well, uh, sorry, filters, domes, etc. Um, this is it in its open position when you touch the latches on the side, a little gold latch, uh, one on each side of the fixture. Uh, it will open, um, and you see it because this little tongue lifts up a little. Um, if you push up from the top, it's now in the lock position. And if I drop in my dome here at the front, I can push it straight past the latch because it swings both ways. And if I try and pull it out, you can see it's still in the lock position. I can then take my um, uh, diffuser and drop that straight in the back um, behind the... Uh, the dome, so you don't need to mess around with the latches. Now, if I need to pull the diffuser out again, I simply touch the latches on the side and I can remove it. Um, that's it. Nicely designed. Yeah, very nice design. How many diffusers so, does it have? Is there just a frost or are there multiple levels of uh, panel that can go in front? Um, like the uh, like the Doppio and the Mini and the Micro, we will have a full range of um, holographic lenses. We're actually still busy developing the frame for that, and it's still going to take maybe another uh, another couple of weeks till we have the final prototype. But uh, yeah, meanwhile, it's ship it's going to be shipping with a, um, a, a like a, a heavy frost uh, as the standard kit diffuser, mm -hmm. um, and then then of course there's um, you know the the dome that you can put in front of that, which is. Um, can I can I see can I see that one that you've got in there now? Can I see is that an egg, egg cray? Yeah, so that that's the uh, the forty five degree. Can you throw a ball yeah. in at the egg cray? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a meanie. <laughs> that's that's cool. Hey, so Tama, who's who's going to have these in the UK? Like, if we need to get more in the next six months. Um, you know, on a, on a, on a weekly rental, not a, not a long-term rental, like who will, who will have these? Oh, really good question. Um, everybody should have them, but who will have them? Of course. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look right, right now. Um, not entirely sure. It, um, uh, uh, our partners there, um, LCA, uh, working with a number of companies and there's, a bunch of individuals have already put in purchase orders, but you know, uh, as far as I'm aware, none of the major rental companies have signed up yet. All right. Um, so you know, wait and see. It'll be, well, it'll but, be pretty but, soon, I think. But, I mean, it's it's yeah. it's all about pressure, isn't it? It's like it's kind of. It is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know for a fact, you know that that again, you know that the the, the the rise of LED, people are always wary about where this rise is going to stop, you know, so people are always wary about investing too much money in LED, as we know, mm -hmm. because they're worried that they're going to get replaced next year. Um, That's right. But I don't, I personally don't see a point now where, and you, you guys tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I think we've plateaued here. Like, yes, you might get a bit more output right next year, 
and you might get a few extra features and it might get this or that, but, but what else do you need beyond this? This to me is like the peak of what we need in a light this size. Like, yes, more output for sure. But I mean, what else, what else, yeah. what else is there? What else is there really? I mean, yeah, the I mean, I'm a curve is really leveling out. It was very steep. Yeah. Of course. It's a, it's a really good question. Um, Greg, and it's one we've been poured over extensively while we've been building this fixture. We could have put in more pixels. Uh, we could yep. have probably put in, squeezed in more drivers and squeezed in more colors. But then again, you've got to fight the diminishing return of, um, you know, so the dollar per watt ratio. And when you start adding in uh, more and more drivers to drive more pixels or drive more colors, you've got to justify that against its primary purposes of the white to light source. So mm -hmm. that, that becomes, you know, sort of the overall defining factor that ultimately is an economic one. Um, yeah. In my opinion. Um, yeah. So you totally. kind of just so, got to so pull, basically pull what the trigger when you think you've got a good balance. Yeah. So what you're saying, what you're saying is, is probably, I mean, to people who are looking at buying it, like rental houses, like, yes, you mm -hmm. could have more output in the future. In 10 years, we're having the same Zoom call in 10 years. There's a COVID right. 20, 29 or something. We're sitting in the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're looking at the same size fixture. And maybe it's a little mm -hmm. bit lighter, but not much lighter, right? Because it's much lighter. Mm -hmm. It's going to be not going to be strong. Um, you might have pixel mapping on every single pixel. You might have smaller mm -hmm. pixels to make it more, right. um, you know, more pixel mapable. Um, still waterproof, but... I mean, what else is there? Like, ultimately, this is the, the point that I'm getting at is like, to me, this is the point yeah. where if you're looking at purchasing LEDs, this is the point where you do it because like this, this is going to stay as good as it is right now forever. And it's bloody good. So like, yeah. 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 Because I think like, you know, when you look at like the success of like DS, when we were always using it, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's really the only punchy LED on the market. That's really... Mm has that unique quality and that and so that really was a just everyone was going more soft rather than going for for this and so when i when you right. first when I, was, I remember the first time i was using the dapios was, was when we did the gambler greg and it was oh, yeah. like that was like wow here's something that's punchy and then once it became you know um between that and the micro color it was like okay now you've got you know the ability to introduce a wider kelvin range but this with the fact that this is going to be something that's a scalable solution yep. that is, you know, and in, and in close, you've got less parts that you're dealing with. It's, it's, it's an internal power supply and all that. So it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see like, you know, somebody who's going to build the, you know, I, I know, I, like, I know I'm going to see a picture from, <laughs> from you guys, Jamie and, and Greg, it would be like 20 of them in some rack that you'll have <laughs> attached to a crane or something. And it's going to be pretty sick. Oh, yeah. That's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> no, it's <coming. laughs> Even even just as a uh, Instagram Instagram my Instagram absolutely. page, no, no. absolutely. <laughs> but that's the type of thing. Like I would say, like twenty of those things um, on a on a condo would be would be wild. It'd be literally wild to see what that could do mm. for a yeah. son. You know, like if you think about it, um, twenty of those. I mean, how many? We had forty eight pixels in the beast, right? Which yeah. is um, uh, the equivalent of about nine of these. Yeah. So you get 20 of them. I mean, we're double the output on that yeah. and the yeah. punch on that. I mean, that's, we're talking about like almost replacing soft stuff, right? Like is. Oh no, definitely. Yeah. And, I, and I think the thing is too, is when you're, especially cause you could take that and you could mix up, like maybe you diffuse some of them, maybe you keep some of them hard. So you've got some couple of different qualities you can generate out of that mm -hmm. or a little more spread or something like that. Because with consoles, the way consoles are going now, uh, you know, it's so easy to pixel map stuff. It's not a big deal anymore. And so yeah. it's like, you know, with networking and all that, it's like you drop a node in the top of the of the bucket of the the condor and and go nuts. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. It's it's. Uh, yeah, we need we need more of them. That's the thing. So yeah, to get to get, get twenty, oh, volume. get crack get in there, 20. Tama. Start making them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we are every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That worldwide. Uh, the down, downstairs as we speak. No, because it's like you guys have a, a unique opportunity because like, okay, area is going in the direction of more of a multifunction par type of thing with the orbiter. That's, and some there's some very interesting color science in that and, and low end dimmability. And I think to speak to what Greg used to earlier is like, where's the next area people are going to go into? It's going to be into kind of like, hey, make, get the low end color mixing better, you know, better dimming, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. 
but there's there's nobody who's really stepping into like let's just get lots of brunt lots Lunch. of output and and pixelization and i think that's that's where this this light is really going to be an excellent asset you know yeah we just have to get them out there bauman like we just have to it has to get out there in quantity so that Quantities. when when we when we request them they're not four times the cost of a of, of a different light you know they yeah. Because right. that's if, if their approximation about the same price, then it's a no-brainer. If they're double, then the mathematics is going to come to it, and we're going to say like, well, do you get a hundred of those or two hundred different ones? You know, like it's yeah, yeah, because so, it is going to be a thing like you're saying of um, of the of of quantity because it's like that's one thing that is you can get like you know oh I need a hundred sky panels okay no problem you know yeah they, they've been you know it used to be what image eighties used to be like all right get a hundred image eighties no problem and now it's so this will be once once people start getting into it and start uh, you know and as you as you ramp up manufacturing it's going to be it's going to be great very exciting mm. yeah thanks thanks a lot well done yeah well thanks team uh, amazing feedback and and really uh, really great to hear your hear your views in person and see everybody and uh, watch everyone dialing in so very cool thank you nice yeah yeah. Uh, does anybody have any other uh, any other little questions or anything? Oh. You're gonna do a half size. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, oh. many. Yeah, uh, like mini uh, version. Uh, well, I'm not supposed to tell you yet. So. Oh. <laughs> so what, what is that? Oh, you just did. We'll have to see. <laughs> have to wait and see. You know, because I think what was great about the cream source micro was the fact that, uh, you know, and the, was that it just it was at a price point that a lot of people could get into it and invest in the platform. Right. And, um, right. you know, and so it's a it's a good starter drug, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the what's this retailing at, Tamar? What's the what's your recommended uh, retail? Four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine USD. Awesome. What is that compared to the Sky panel, Tamar? Uh, panel is like uh, a million, right? Seven seventy five hundred. So, uh, so fifty eight fifty is what it hits the street for. Yeah, that's like I guess yeah. the B and H price. Yeah, it's uh, well, that's the MAP is uh, if the advertised price would be fifty eight fifty, so it's close to six thousand dollars. Yeah. So this this um, is going to be what, uh, five basically five, five, five. five. listed five. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah at. At the sort of comparative um, MAPs, this this delivers you like uh, seven seven dollars sixty nine a watt versus um, like fourteen dollars a watt for yeah. you know, the other brand. Yes, yeah, that blue and silver brand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, it's a mystery. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> a mystery. awesome. Complete. Maybe you answered this before, but I I I, I don't uh, remember. Uh, how many pixels are in the unit or is it all on just one? Uh, I, is, yeah. Does that, does that break up into sections? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's got, um, I think eight total. Yeah. Is it eight? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Another great attribute to the light. To have. Yeah. yeah. It's like eight, eight micros, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. More versatility and awesomeness. That's so cool, dude. I want to, I want to have a more of a play with this. How much RAM is on board that yeah. thing? Ah, great question. Uh, I think there's, um, I think it's like two megabytes or something. Yeah. Okay. But it's Next? expandable. Yeah. So. Oh, it's expandable. Oh, it's yeah. expandable. Yeah, it's ex expandable. Okay. And Tama, for firmware updates, uh, it's file based. So just throw a USB stick into it. Yeah, so there's a you know the whole drive system and everything. So yeah, the, the USB USB A port for standard thumb drives. Yeah. Great. I obviously, obviously it's a Timo two CRMX built in, so you don't need an Intel. Timo two CRMX and um, yeah, we we've been doing a bunch of antenna placement testing, of course, in the final weeks, um, and we've we've found that the signal strength even with the internal antennas is, is pretty good because of these um, technopolymer right. uh, back covers. Metal. So that's kind that's of the problem, right? The, yeah, metal's the real issue. Yeah. And what, what's the input, that port next to the, that you've got next to the, um, is that DC in? That's DC 48 volts. 48 volts. And okay. 
Yeah, and so actually the unit's hot swappable. It's got a hot swap controller built in. So you can run it on a battery at the same time as you get the AC plugged in. So if you need to run a light, light next to camera, or you, you know, you need to move something or you've got a cable running across your shot, you just drop your battery in and, and off you go. Um, that's that's the, the, the idea with that. And you don't have to repower the fixture and mm -hmm. find your settings again, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, cool. Very yeah. cool. Well done. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey, great. Well done, Summer. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot, Tammy. Thanks, team. And, and thanks, everybody, for all your amazing inputs into into this and, you know, all, all of the other things we've been building over the years. You've all contributed um, and given us incredible feedback, uh, and that's so valuable to us, and it, mean, it means the world, and it's it's what's kept us alive and, and kicking and inspired to keep building things like this. So Good. Um, that's really really all, all of your input from all of you. So thank you so much. It's amazing. Good. Good. Yeah. Cool. Mm. All right, mate. Thanks. All right. Good to see you guys. Good see you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it was really Thanks, great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, really great demonstration, Tama. Thank you for this. Um, you guys, uh, it was quite an honor to have all you guys from all over the world on one Zoom chat. I'm not sure we'll ever be able to do that again as soon as we get busy, but it's quite iconic. Well, lasted, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 20, 2029, Michael. Yeah. 2029. COVID <laughs> 2029. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Take care, right. Guys. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, Patrick. Take, Have a good weekend. Take it easy. See you guys. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Last person who hangs up gets a free cream source. <laughs> oh, <I'm> staying on. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. All right. Seriously, it's really nice. Looks great. Like, Thank you, Mike. Yeah. No, it's going to be good. I can't wait to play with it. So, yeah. yeah. Can't, can't wait to get a bunch of units there in, in your hands. We'll send you a PO, Mike. Fun. No, thank you. I appreciate you got it. A PO? You have any POs for it yet? Yeah, I have uh, 60 on order and growing. So, and uh, I know Tom is going to give priority to those that give um, prepayments. So I'm scrambling up all the cash and breaking the piggy banks right now. Ah, <laughs> good to know. All right. Yeah. Cool. So, Mike, right. uh, thank you so much for, uh, for coming on, supporting us. I really appreciate yeah. you very much. Can't tell you how much that means to us, actually. Absolutely. Thanks for. Uh, and thanks we, we love. Uh, we got your light mats in the showroom. Paul's getting me a spectrum. In next week so oh cool yeah. great we're gonna be yeah. showing that around. I, I i was saying to somebody i think what the yeah. the future lighting package is going to be it's going to be um uh, you know it'll be uh, you know i i say it's going to come down to like five or six light people have their stair tubes people yeah. have you know i mean there'll be some sky panels still there'll probably be i think the orbiter you know sure we'll see once that thing gets out but it's gonna and then it's going to be vortexes and it's going to be like whatever your soft, preferable soft source is like big soft thing and that's like mm -hmm. You know, that's what the future is going to be of this whole thing. I tell you, that's the, the packages that we're seeing out of here for gaffers, uh, sixty to $100,000. Um, they're, they're sky panels, they're steras, they're light mats. Um, and for us, it's, of course, a lot of cream source. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's really starting, the, the air is starting to get thinner around, and you can see who's actually going to kind of uh, stand the test of time in yeah. the room. I got a lot of, I got a lot of old LEDs in, in my museum. Tom is making, asking me to do a... Yeah, yeah. proper museum with all the shit yeah, I have. I got, I got like Frieder's first attempt at a, of a one by one, which is the Kelvin oh, yeah. tile. I got LEDs, but yeah, they yeah. they end up staying in the showroom, and then you know, a couple of years later, my Cineo uh, remote phosphors. You know, they yeah. got to get out of the showroom. But I'll tell you what, that Dopio for eleven years has still been in the showroom, and it's still relevant, still a great build, and it's probably the 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 best LED I've owned in my realm department because I have zero issues, not one issue. Yeah, I mean, Thomas, seriously, your guys' build quality is phenomenal. That's like the one thing of, of your lights that like people always, always have commented to me on. Just the touch and feel is really well done. And so mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, whether that's you designing it or whoever on your team, it's like hats off to him. That's Thomas. Thomas the mechanical. Oh, there you go. For sure. It's great <laughs> Thank work. Thank you, Mike. It really is. And, and the use Thank of materials. You. I mean, I'm just saying that from the manufacturing and it's like, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really phenomenal. So uh, thanks so much. We yeah. yeah we we really love all all the sort of different materials and sometimes my my team has to rein me in because I'm like yeah. no I want to try that process that looks really awesome. Yeah, no, 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 They've got no, huge no. machines for that process. Yeah. It's so much yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah come no, on let's go let's go visit the factory and then we go and we see what they're doing and we incorporate it. You know that's yeah. that's the fun of of doing this part. Yeah, this end a lot of, the of fun, Tom. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs>
What time is it there? Oh, 1 a.m.? Uh, I have no idea. It's like 2 in the morning. No, it, Where are you, Hong Kong? Yeah, it's 2 now. Yeah. Yeah, it, up, up river from Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, good, mate. Well, I can't wait to, I can't wait to, uh, you know, I got a movie that's starting at the end of August, supposedly, in town here. So. Oh, cool. Oh, great. As nice. those come, as those come in, those would be, uh, those would be good tools to, to put on it. Oh, first on the list, of course. So, so hey, man. Get them, you get them. Get, we'll give you a PO on Monday, no problem. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. We and actually really appreciate it in these times. No, no, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Look, it's all about, I get it. Right now for all of us, manufacturing, sales, whatever, it's all about like, you know, just getting the, getting the business back to like spending money again and making movies. Mm-hmm. And all that. It's just mm-hmm. like, we're all that. Like, yeah. I think there's a positive sign. It looks like there's a lot of positive sign that's coming back and the worst but, hopefully is yeah. behind us. And we've learned how to deal with this. So if there is another surge, we still know how to at least uh, operate through it now. So yeah. that's just my wear, opinion. Wear their mask. Wear their mask. Just wear a fucking mask. Just wear a mask. Yeah. What's the problem? Yeah. Wear the fucking mask. Work? <laughs> yes. Jeez. It's unbelievable. really simple. And yeah. It, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, big time, big time. I mean, I think I really think the biggest difference it makes is it stops people touching their faces. Exactly. And it's when you touch your face and you go and touch doorknobs yeah. and push buttons and elevators, that's, that's transmission. I, you know, exactly. I didn't realize how much mm-hmm. I touched my face until I was conscious of it. And I kept on stopping myself. I'm like, holy shit, I touched my face a lot. Yeah, and like so, you said, it's just like it's common surfaces. And it's just, you know, mm-hmm. just just being cognizant of all that. And it's just, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment, but you know, that's, it's how we're going to, um, we have to move forward this way. You guys are doing it there. I mean, in Hong Kong, it's like, no. you know, you guys are, I mean, you can do it. Yeah. Everyone can do it. You can do it here in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. you know? yeah. problem. It's not an invasion of, of anything. It's just, no, so exactly. just dude, yeah. anyway. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Well, take Bye. care. All right, I'm going to really appreciate it. I'm going to outdo you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, take care. All right, Mike. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot.